Chinese propaganda warfare, information warfare, um, especially vis-a-vis -vis our borders has picked up, uh, you know, over the years. We all are aware of China's sort of three warfare strategy and how they believe to use the information environment to achieve their core objectives. Now, vis-a-vis -vis India, uh, you know, we've seen uh, when I say that the LAC is live now, they've not just opened the front in Ladakh, they've gone up to uh, talking about Arunachal Pradesh as well. China has officially sort of laid claim to the whole state of Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, and since 2006, uh, you know, they've been specific in outlining and calling uh, Ar Arunachal Pradesh as Southern Tibet in their official discourse. Now, we are also aware that in the 19th sort of CPC, President Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping told herdsmen from a Tibetan settlement, I think bordering Arunachal Pradesh, to set down routes to safeguard Chinese territory and focus on developing their hometown. So what we've seen since then is rapid construction and upgrade of infrastructure across the border, which is obviously dual use. We have seen a lot of poverty elevation camps to encourage grazer settlements. You've seen a lot of commercial projects launched near the villages to sustain livelihood for locals. You have upgrading of military infrastructure on the LAC. And, you know, they have come up with these concepts called beautiful villages, happy homes for sacred guardians, etc. Directly opposite uh, the Indian military area of responsibility. You know, what is all of this trying to uh, sort of show? It's, it's, it sort of is a reflection of Chinese sort of influence operations, uh, you know, where you are directly pitting development in a state like Arunachal Pradesh in India to that of China. So whether it's infrastructure, religion, knowledge of local tribes, anecdotes from border patrol meetings, etc., is in my opinion has to sort of feed back into the loop of the pushback that India sees. Uh, now, the Ch China has very effectively used social media to sort of, uh, you know, drill it into uh, mass propaganda that, you know, people in the state of our Natural Pradesh are very, very unhappy with their current lives. And which is why Ch you, China will be doing the people of the state a favor, not really mainstreaming at all. Uh, the voices from our side of the border where or the Arunachalis in what they think of China's propaganda. Now, part of this has also been um, a sort of shortcoming from the Indian side because we've not been able to successfully mainstream, uh, you know, local perceptions from the ground into our larger broader, broader conversation on the border dispute. Now, I spent about two months, uh, one in 2019, and 2018 doing sort of uh, an assessment of uh, border populations in Arunachal Pradesh to a lot of the claims and counterclaims between India and China and how they perceived uh, the boundary dispute, you know, both historically in terms of what is the pulse of the people, what are the issues of the ground that New Delhi needs to take, uh, you know, account for, et cetera. So I think, you know, that's why I said that, you know, it's one thing for New Delhi and Beijing to sort of, you know, engage in this propaganda battle on the boundary dispute. But the fact on the ground is that, uh, you know, people in the border are really holding the flag high for India. And I think I found through uh, my survey of population in terms of the many areas I visited across four valleys in the state of Arunachal Pradesh that they're very angry actually with the sort of propaganda machinery that, China has deployed and they have said that, you know, how can they are a very important, uh, they're descendants of important tribes uh, who are indigenous to the state of Arunachal Pradesh and they chose to live in India. And they, for them, the fact that Arunachal Pradesh only gets spotlight because of the India-China conversation globally seems uh, extremely dissatisfying because they want local development which and conversations on building up infrastructure, uh, basic socioeconomic development to sort of overshadow this debate with China, which they see is redundant because they see no claims of China, whether it is on the basis of, you know, Tibetan Buddhism or ecclesiastical links or historical links at all valid. So they say that, you know, 
please keep us out of these meaningless debates. Tell China to mind its own business. And as far as we are concerned, uh, you know, development needs to be prioritized in the state. And I think what we are now beginning to understand sitting in New Delhi that, you know, I, I, propaganda battles will continue, but I think developing internal capacity uh, needs to be the way forward and therefore mainstreaming conversation of people who are in the border directly sort of impacted uh, by these sort of actions by China needs to be taken more seriously and the propaganda aspect of it in terms of influence operations has to be addressed as well. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about the Eastern Ladakh crisis, please check out the other videos in our exclusive interview series here on our YouTube channel and visit stratlearning.org to enroll for free in Deterrence in Southern Asia.